Hey guys, it's MJ who's truly. Hope y'all are having an amazing, amazing day today. TGIF. Thank God I am forgiven. Hope y'all are forgiven too. Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Um, not religious, not going to church, not doing good works. Um, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Today I'm going to share about my favorite, favorite thing, the rapture. Okay, I'm going to go into some scriptures and I'm going to go into um, just a little bit. This channel is 100% pre-trib, by the way, um, meaning that the rapture happens before the seven-year tribulation, which is up and coming that rapture is the next prophetic event on God's calendar. So first I want to get some housekeeping out of the way. Um, you know, it's getting darker. Tootsie's in the background. If you see that little black lump right there, that is Tootsie right there. See right there on my couch. That's Alan and I at the beach. And there's my little tooks. Anyway, it's getting really dark out, guys. Darker. Israel is still surrounded by her enemies. God is about to step in. The gospel is good news. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. God didn't make it hard. Man made it hard. Religion made it hard. This here flesh made it hard. God didn't make it hard. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should simply believe should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, it's simple. God made it simple. Simple as a child could believe it. You know, the wages of our sin or the penalty of us being born into this condition called sin is death, eternal separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So how do we get there? You know, we're all separated from God at birth. We are born or conceived in this condition called sin. So we need to be born again. That's what Jesus means when he says we must be born again. Um, Jesus paid the penalty so that we could have that penalty. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So how do we get there? A is to simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins, not only for the sins of this whole wide world, but your own personal sins and see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved, not might be saved if you complete this program or join this church. The moment, the very nanosecond that you call upon the name of the Lord and repent, repent is, the Greek word is metanoia. That simply means to change your mind about whatever you're currently believing you believe in Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, whatever, fill in your own blank. You know, God repented. And we know that God is 100% holy, has never done anything wrong, um, is omnipotent, omniscient. Okay, God repented, changed his mind. Change your mind about what you're currently believing and believe the gospel. Okay, repent. Um a, simply admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, and I would do that today, guys. Don't wait. Do not wait. Tomorrow is not promised. Okay, so hope you're all having an amazing day. Despite, remember, despite anything that's going on in this world, Jesus is still in the boat all right, it's getting really dark out there, um, but Jesus triumphed over all of our enemies, and we are going home soon and very soon. As I said, this channel is 100% pre-trib. 
Um, what is the rapture? Again, I want to say I'm not a pastor. I am not a teacher. I am not a counselor. Simply a redeemed member of the body of Christ. A prodigal brought back from the brink of death and destruction. Addiction and the lifestyle that accompanied it for such a time as this. Um, why do I do this channel? Um, simply because once upon a time I was a prodigal and um, out there wandering, not all who wander are lost. And um, I wish someone would have come looking for me. You know, I was out there a long time. And you know, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And you know, there are a lot of prodigals out there that are truly prodigals. And they don't have the sufficient skills or understanding of scripture. And the enemy is telling them, hey, you know, you're not really saved. Or if you were really saved, or if God really loved you, then fill in the blank. If God really cared, then this wouldn't happen. If you were really saved, eternal security is just that, eternal. The gift of God is just that, a gift, okay? All right, back to the rapture. What is the rapture? Okay, 2 Peter 3, 3 through 5, we know that the rapture is under attack right now, isn't it? I mean, you are hearing so much like, all right, this rapture, and I'm referring to my notes, by the way, that I printed. Um, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, here's these scoffers and mockers, walking after their own lust and saying, what is this promise of this coming? What is this Jesus you guys are talking about? You know, um, this is happening right now and happening even more so, you know, as the labor pains increase, not climate change, guys. The earth is groaning. Hello, this is not climate change, has nothing to do with climate change or global warming or any of this. The earth is groaning just as the Bible says that it would. God's going to wrap it all up at the end and fold it up just like a scroll. Um, so let's unpack this because we are at the end of this dispensation called the church age. And Jesus told us to lift up our heads and look up for our redemption draws nigh. This isn't our home, guys. So we got something to be excited about. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And we're about to see that place. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. That's us. We're about to see that place that Jesus has been preparing for us. And... I don't know who's stoked about it, but I sure am. We're citizens of heaven. We're simply passing through. We're ambassadors. We're simply passing through here. We're in this world, but we are not of it. So while the word rapture itself is not specifically found in the Bible, neither is the word Trinity and neither is the word Bible itself. But we know we certainly know that these words are, these concepts are found in God's word. Bible, rapture, trinity. Rapture is from the Latin word rapturo, which means to catch away. Um, in biblical terms, the rapture is an event near the end times, and we certainly can all agree that these are the end times, according to Bible prophecy, when Jesus will appear in the air to gather his followers up into heaven to that place where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Um, those Christians who are currently in their graves will be resurrected and join those Christians who are alive and remain. I believe it is this final generation who are alive and remain and will be taken to that place where Jesus has been preparing for us. Um, if you haven't seen my video, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel, by the way. But if you haven't seen my video on the Galilean wedding, um, please refer back to that because Jesus spoke of the Galilean wedding um, to his disciples and that speaks a whole lot about the rapture. Um, so 
it is used here, rapture, it is used here to describe that moment when all born again believers will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the year. And that's 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. That is what we are doing on these channels, guys. So many YouTube channels have popped up since the pandemic, and my channel is one of them. I never saw myself here um, doing a YouTube channel ever, ever. Um, or writing books. I mean, I'm a nurse, uh, but I never saw myself doing this, but the Lord put this urgency on my heart as he has with so many other believers. Encourage one another as you see the day approaching. Guys, that day is approaching. And the Bible says that in the end, prior to the rapture, it will be as a woman in labor. And as a woman in labor, the contractions will intensify with frequency. Um, and the contractions since the pandemic, we can all agree, have gotten off the charts crazy. Um, so that's what we're doing on these channels. As I tell y'all, the rapture and the second coming of Christ are not the same. So don't confuse the two. The rapture happens first and is between Revelations chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3 and 4. And we are a heartbeat away from the sound of that trumpet, guys. The 24 elders represent the church age saints. And we are sitting around that throne worshiping our creator before he brings about any type of judgment on this earth. So if anybody tells you we're in the tribulation or we have to go through the tribulation, that is not true. The restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit in the church, is obviously about to be removed as evidenced by the intensity and frequency of labor pains occurring in rapid succession since the pandemic. Israel is surrounded by her enemies and you can be certain that God is about to step in as scripture tells us that he will. And the moment after the rapture, life on earth will become a living hell as described in Revelation 11 through 18. Believers will be at the wedding spared from the wrath of God. Guys, we are not appointed to wrath. Jesus Christ took all of our wrath, our sins past, present, and future, were forgiven on that cross. That was our wrath. That is the wrath of God for us. That happened on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished to tell us die. So we are not appointed to wrath. We are not appointed to go through the tribulation. The tribulation is the 70th week of Daniel. Um, the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church's trouble the time of Jacob. Jacob is Israel, and Israel is being prepared for the time of Jacob's trouble currently. Okay, so the second coming of Christ comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation when, when Jesus comes in judgment to reign on earth as king during the millennium. Um... And we're going to avoid all that trauma and everything. But the reason I believe that this is the only correct, um, you know, view, you know, there's post-trib, mid-trib. Uh, I don't believe any of that because, as I just said, Jesus took our wrath on the cross. But it doesn't mean that we can't fellowship as Christians because if you believe in the doctrine you know, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again according to Scripture. If you believe that and have embraced that as a believer, um, we can fellowship. We're all fellows in the same ship, you know, but we don't argue 
Jesus said, you will know that they're my believers. You will know that they're my mind by their love for one another. Not by the, he, Jesus hates discord, dissension. That's one of the things that he hates, according to the Bible. One of the things that God hates is uh, somebody that sows discord amongst the brethren. And I see so much of that. And, you know, we don't need that. We don't need to do that in these final moments, guys. So um, save that. Or don't do that, you know, pray about it. So the reason I believe this is the only correct, you know, view and no prophetic events remain that must be fulfilled before the rapture must occur, none. Jesus's return is imminent. Nothing needs to happen, guys. Jesus could come for you and me at any moment. That's what, and you know where there's a crown awaiting those of us who look up and lift up our heads and look up daily. There is a crown awaiting. Not that we do that for this crown. Um, we don't do this for this crown um, because we're going to throw this down at his feet anyway. We have this expectation, this longing to see our king, our savior daily. Um, and it, it's growing exponentially because Jesus is putting that in our heart. So um, we're not looking for the second coming of Christ or for the signing of a peace treaty between the Antichrist and Israel because we're going to be gone. We're not going to be here. We're looking for the rapture. We're looking for our Savior, our groom. It will happen in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. When the tribulation begins, uh, the wicked man known as in the Bible as the Antichrist will come to power and control ten countries and I won't get into all that because I am not a pastor or a teacher um, or a counselor. Uh, the seven-year clock will start when the Antichrist signs that peace treaty um, and you know that peace treaty will be broken and all hell will break loose and the seals and the trumpets and the bowls and um, God's wrath will be released. Um, we won't be here. Okay, and a lot of people, a lot of Christians will tell you, yes, we will be here. And who are we to be spared from all this? Because the other Christians weren't spared from all this. Because Jesus said it is finished. And because our wrath happened on that cross. We are not appointed to wrath. Simply because it was poured out upon that cross for believers. We are the bride of Christ. Okay, a few scriptures. At the rapture, believers meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 At the second coming, believers return with the Lord to the earth. Revelation 19.14 The rapture occurs before the tribulation begins. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 and Revelation 3.10 And I encourage y'all to do your own studying. Um, I have been studying in depth about this because the Lord has had me um, looking into this in detail. And you know, the Bible, the only book of the Bible with a promise, a blessing. I mean, every book of the Bible we get blessed. But the only book of the Bible that's promised a blessing when we read it is the book of Revelation. And I used to like avoid that book altogether up until the pandemic when the Holy Spirit said to me, all right, let's, let's study here. Okay. Because we're at the end. We're at the end of this dispensation called the church age. Okay. So I would highly encourage y'all to do your own study. And so I'm giving you these, um, scriptures. The rapture is the removal of believers from the earth as an act of deliverance. 1 Thessalonians 4.13-17 through 17 and 1 Thessalonians 5.9. The second coming includes the removal of unbelievers as an act of judgment. Matthew 24, 40, and 41. The rapture will be secret and instant. 1 Corinthians 15.50-54. The second coming will be visible to all. Revelation 1, 7, and Matthew 24, 29, and 30. The second coming of Christ will not occur until after certain other end-time events take place. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, 
Matthew 24, 15 through 30, and Revelation 6 through 18. The rapture is imminent. It could take place at any moment before this video is even over. Titus 2, 13, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 54. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, do not wait. We are not promised tomorrow. Keep looking up, guys, because our redemption draws nigh. We're one day closer to our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you guys. Know that we are praying for you and yours. And I'm going to end with, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Because Jesus, although this is written to the church even, um, Jesus is knocking. And guys, how many people are going to be one split second after the rapture are going to be left behind in sorrow, knowing that, wow, you know, those crazy Christians were right. But there's going to be a great harvest during the tribulation, the greatest harvest ever. So keep planting those seeds. Keep sharing the gospel. <clears throat> because um, the Bible says that the word of God does not come back void. And it will not come back void. So keep sharing. You might get mocked and scoffed at. Uh, but we are in the final moments, guys. I don't know what second is going to happen. But we know that we are in the final moments of the end of this dispensation called the church age. And the rapture of the church is imminent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I heard a faint knocking today at my heart's door. And I was ashamed to answer. For I knew it was the Lord. There he stood looking humble and sad, his eyes full of compassion like a concerned, thoughtful dad. Don't you know, he said, I know everything, and there's nothing hidden, child, that I haven't seen. I've watched you destroying yourself, and my spirit has grieved, and my intention in visiting today is to set your soul free. Behold, my child, I stand at the door and knock, but only from your side can that door be unlocked. I have many treasures awaiting you, but remember, my path is narrow and my followers few. I won't force the issue and I'll never intrude. I respect your will and I wouldn't dare be rude. And there's one more thing before I go. You must believe that I love you so. That alone will be sufficient to meet all of your needs. But the requirement is that you truly believe. My love and truth will set your soul free, even when your will doesn't want to agree. Reach out and touch me. Call on my name. If you're a true believer, you'll know that's why I came. I came to set the captives free. And beloved, this is your name written down in front of me. Is your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because there is nothing more important than knowing that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you're born again. I love you guys. Until next time, keep looking up. The rapture is imminent. Till next time.